Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. It's going to be an open that book. So uh, the concept behind open that book is books in my collection that I haven't looked at. And this falls into that category. I have seen maybe the first like 20 or 25 pages of this massive vault edition Todd McFarlane spawn. So let's do Super Fun Sunday. And what's it going to be? It's going to be super fun. Um, we're not going to start at the beginning of the book, though. We'll look at the first like, couple of pages, but I'm going to skip to where I haven't seen. So, uh, anyway, um, actually, for my Patreon uh, supporters, I had done um, an unlisted video where I went through maybe like 25 pages of this book, something like that. But anyway, so these are scanned off the original art. Um, I think it's issues one through seven, possibly issues one through eight. We'll see. Um, and, uh, yeah, I am a huge, huge Todd McFarlane fan. Um, he was my first uh, introduction in the comics, uh, besides just a few seeing a few comic books as a kid. So uh, yeah, Spawn was my first book. I saw a friend of mine called me and said, "Rich, you need to check out Spawn." I was like, "What are you talking about? What's Spawn?" He said, "It's a comic book. And I think you'll love it." And I was like, "All right, let's do this." So I drove down to the comic book store where he worked. And I checked it out. And uh, it's a slight funny story, but um, I have been in that store dozens of times because they rented video games too, and I would never look at the comic books. Imagine that. Me, Richard Friend, comic book artist, went to comic book stores dozens of times. I had a, one of my best friends work there, a guy that I was in a band with. Never looked at the comics. Go in, I would rent PlayStation games. And then I'd go home and smash some buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I always did art for bands and my band and friends, and I'd always been kind of known as someone that could draw pretty good. So uh, he put it together and got my ass on track. So Robert Gaston, if you ever see this, I love you, buddy, and thank you. And this is actually signed by Todd. He did real signatures, and I think one out of every hundred books um, he did a sketch in. And I want to say the print run on this book was like 1,500 copies, something like that. I'm guessing. So here, we're going we're gonna to go to about where... Um, where I uh, left off, and don't worry, we'll look at a lot of pages, so you'll get it. You'll get a nice. Yeah, we'll start here. Let's do this. All right. Uh, ooh, okay. I'll we'll start here. So, Todd. You know what can you say about Todd? Dude is so talented. He's so creative. His stuff had so much energy, and uh, the dude fought for it. He always tells his comic book story. It was a struggle. Man, those panel borders are crazy. Um, it looks to me like he did it with a brush, but it's a pretty intricate panel borders. Um, God, I would love, I would love to interview Todd McFarlane and ask him about this stuff, um, in more detail because, uh, the fact that he penciled and inked this stuff and did, did it on a monthly schedule is really impressive. Hold on, I'm going to open the curtain real quick, get a little extra light in here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just amazing to me. He was able to pencil and ink a page a day because it really is a lot of work. And I mean, you know, a comic book page is, is no joke. I mean, you're going to be doing a lot of drawings. Um, and uh, I had read or heard him say before that he would do um, like set kind of a timer and he would give himself a certain amount of time per panel. Um, my recollection was it was an hour a panel, not probably not for inks, but um, at least maybe an hour a panel to pencil, and then um, you figure inks would take at least half of that amount of time, if not more. Sometimes inking can actually take a little longer than it would to actually draw the drawing. Um, it's a really cool violator. I think what made me think of this is like there's like Venom mania going on online. I'm seeing tons of Venom covers and variants and um, fan art and stuff like that. And it's like, I can't think of Venom without thinking of Mr. McFarlane. So this is what I had. I figure this is pretty good. How many of you all have picked this up? Because I'll tell you what, if they do another one, I'm definitely going to get it. Because the next chunk of books, if they go in order, has some of my favorite issues. So it'll be interesting. It's a little tricky, though, because some of them he had, like, uh, you know, other collaborators, which may actually kind of, like, 
sometimes that stuff doesn't always go according to plan. I had heard rumors, or not rumors, but I think I had read somewhere or seen online that they were kind of fighting over the rights for Angela. But that first issue with Angela in it, man, Todd drew his ass off. It was so cool. But yeah, so I love Todd McFarlane's stuff. Um, one of the first guys that I inked at Wildstorm on like an ongoing title, Mel Ruby, actually kind of drew a lot like Todd. And this was a tricky style for me to ink in because it's very loose and kind of... Um, I, you know, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to explain, but I mean, it, I wouldn't call it like anti-inking, but, but <laughs> it's not fussy. Let's put it that way. And I think ultimately what ends up happening is when you sort of cultivate an inking style, it, it kind of ends up being fussy, um, unless you're doing your own stuff and maybe, maybe that's just an era, but, um, you know, people wanted stuff pretty pretty neat and slick and, and um, you know, you wouldn't maybe be able to get away with this on other people's stuff. And it's interesting, too, because when Capullo came in and kind of def redefined um, the look of Spawn over a lot of issues, um, he ended up being kind of a slicker version of Todd, more detailed and, and uh, you know, with inkers like uh, Danny Mickey on him. Um, really kind of am amplified it and ultimately kind of turned it into something a little bit different. Todd's stuff can look a little more primitive. It's still really cool though, but yeah, it's tricky because it's it almost looks like he uses like a very, very, like, like he was using a dull nib. Like he didn't really care if like, you know, um, it was all perfect and every line was sharp and pointy. It was really about the dynamics of the drawings, which he is really good at. Man. Yeah, Todd's stuff was so 3D. That's That was one of the things that immediately drew me to it. And the colors on the book. All the optics, man. It was great. So cool. It was so cutting edge. I had no idea, um, one, that comics were even still being made. And two, uh, how far they had come along from the stuff that I had seen as a kid. So it was cool. It's like, dang. This stuff actually is pretty exciting. Yeah, Todd's great with form. So everyone knows the story about Todd, I would assume, you know, turned down submission packages like 300 times, kept fighting for it, kept submitting, ultimately broke in on, I think Coyote might have been his first book. And then he just took it like a beast and crushed comics for, I don't even know how long, decades, he still is, even though he doesn't draw as much um, now, he, well, he actually kind of draws more now than he was uh, a few years ago, but, um, yeah, you know, I mean, Amazing Spider-Man was incredible, he did some Hulk stuff, um, and, uh, what was that one called, Infinity Inc., maybe, I have those issues somewhere, um, Kind of has like an early version of Spawn in it. It's sort of funny. Um, you know, and then he did Spider-Man for, I think, 16 issues, um, which he wrote and drew. Another amazing achievement. And then, uh, you know, he went on to be probably one of the most pro prolific uh, image founders. Gosh, this is awesome. Really cool hands. Just, you know. So Todd. But again, you see, not super fussy just works. It's because it's drawn well, you know. He draws awesome capes. His chains are great. Very, very cool dynamic hands. It's interesting to kind of, in your mind, look at what he finds important in a drawing and what he kind of eliminates and still puts in but doesn't give it as much care. It's something to take note of if you're trying to develop your own style because Although I think we all have good intentions and want to get great at drawing everything, you don't necessarily have to be great at drawing everything to have really, really cool art. So it's a good lesson to learn. Um, you know, find your strengths and really amplify them. And then, uh, you know, the things you're not as good at, you know, you're still probably going to have to put them into some of the books and stuff that you do, but... Uh,
you can slowly define those, redefine them better, but, you know, you could kind of write, like, a list of, like, like an artist that you admire. What are they great at, and what, what do you see that maybe they avoid or that, that you don't agree with? I got like a pop up on my window. Hopefully, it doesn't. I'm getting tons of messages on my phone as I'm filming this. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully, this is fun and sort of unexpected. Um, you know, I want to stick with a storytelling sort of um, slant to things because of of you know me working on my own comic book and really kind of trying to focus on that and uh these big books are fun because i think that they're they're a little different and you know obviously this is kind of a throwback to geez 25 years ago i guess i don't know when these books came out um but uh still exciting stuff man that cape is great So I know that Todd was a big fan of Marshall Rogers. I'm trying to think of some of his other influences. I would assume he liked Art Adams, probably Michael Golden. Um, I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I actually like really like, I've looked at these. So I'm sure he was a fan of a lot of stuff, and I think. Um, from what I remember is is because he was getting so much bounce back from his submission packages that he would really kind of have to hit the woodshed in between sample packs and, and kind of like, um, you know, learn things that he wasn't as strong at. And, you know, sometimes y you have to like pick up things that you're probably not going to keep, but if it, if it will get you work, then you just do it. So I'm sure he experienced some of that, like where, and who knows, maybe he's he's got a pretty strong personality. He may have have fought it, but you know what I mean. Like sometimes you you want to get in the door, so you'll you'll okay. Like my girls need to be prettier, or or my heroes that are out of costume look, need to look you know a certain way or whatever it is, and um, you know you 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 appeal to that editor to get it where you want. And then once you get your foot in the door, you can kind of start to bend things to your own will and, and then you can get away with more I love these long thin panels that he does so when I would collect these books I think I, I started collecting when Spawn, Spawn had already been out so I had to go backwards and buy a couple um, but uh, I would always come home on Wednesday I had a bean bag and I would go, go into my room and I would totally like um, I would totally read them and Spawn usually had a decent amount of uh dialogue in it so it was like you know wasn't a fast comic to get through but yeah I was always I always looked forward to, to actually getting the book reading it checking out the art and uh, putting them in my collection that's awesome <laughs> look at the structure on that thing's face it's so cool oh my gosh Todd I love your work I'm telling you you made me a comic book artist if they would have said, hey, you know what? There's this book called... I don't want to use the name. <laughs> anyway, but it's a good thing that this book was suggested and maybe not some of the other ones. Could have gone horribly wrong. My friend might have gone like, hey, you need to check out so-and-so. This comic I would have gone down and gone, what are you showing me this garbage for? Come on, dude. Let's go meet girls and play video games. So that's cool. <laughs> Luckily, it was this thing chose the right thing. He knew me he knew me well. This is like a he heavy metal put into a comic book. Oh, is this the I'm not really following along with the stories I'm looking at it actually. I'm just kind of tripping out on the art, but um where oh maybe it's Oh, what is the issue? Is it issue two? The ice cream man? Hold on, let me, I just want to go back for a second. I guess this is issue one. No, okay, maybe it's issue four or five. One where he strings up the ice cream man, pokes him with, with um, popsicle sticks. <laughs> maybe it's issue five. Oh, wait, my camera's going the wrong way. Sorry, I got caught up in a moment. 
Oh yeah, and this whole like clock with like the sand, sand through the hourglass. I don't even remember what that ultimately meant. Was it like Spawn was was like slowly dying or coming back to life, something like that. It's been a while. Oh, Wanda, and the dog. It's a nice looking dog. It's nice and loose, but the structure is strong enough that it actually reads pretty solid. It's, it's a little more tricky to do than you might think, because actually, if you look at this one, you see how the structure is a little more um, amalgamous. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right term, but um, but yeah, yeah, animals can be tricky, especially the furry ones. And I, uh, when I did those drawing animals out of my head, um, you know, I even said that I said uh, those eyes are crazy. Um, it looks like Betty Boop. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and he would always hide like Felix the cat, like in his pages. I was like that too. Todd did a lot of fun stuff. It was interesting too because we were talking about um, I have a little email chain with some friends who collect art. We were talking about McFarlane yesterday, and uh, I was saying that like what I liked about Todd's stuff is it was fun. Bam. That's cool. Yeah, the three-dimensionality of Todd's work I always found really, really enjoyable. Like, he really could, like, make stuff look like it was kind of popping off of the page, and um, everything had structure, and it was, like, overlapping, and, um, you know, just didn't look flat. It looked exciting. And he has that video, the Stanley Presents video or whatever. He kind of talks about, like, he could draw just about anything and make it, like, kind of, like, dramatic and exciting and I would agree I would agree with that it's interesting too because if you look at Jim Lee's career and like how much Jim still draws I mean obviously he's very active on Twitch right now but in general I mean the amount of work that Jim oh, that's interesting um, the amount of work that Jim has done over the last like 15 years we'll say from Hush forward um it would have been really, really interesting. I mean, Todd obviously went into other, other uh, endeavors, but but I would be fascinating to have seen Todd actually draw for another fifteen years, really, really aggressively, kind of like Jim does. Um, like what the stuff would look like now, because we kind of get Todd going back and drawing, but but not like he's not doing you know two or three hundred pieces a year and doing tons of covers. He did a great cover, like a pirate cover a few years ago. In fact, you know what? I'll look for it online. I'll post it on my Patreon. So look for a link in the description below. But um, he, he did a pirate piece maybe five or ten years ago. Um, like a, I think it was a wraparound cover. It was badass, man. It was really, really good. Um, so Todd's definitely still got a major, major knockout punch when he wants to dig in and do like full pieces. He kind of does more like those drawing lessons online. Although I haven't seen one in a while, but I'm not on Facebook really anymore. That is so cool. It almost has a little bit of like a Dr. Seuss vibe. And I really like that kind of stuff. Dr. Seuss and um, Charles Schultz and um, uh, what else? Bill Watterson and uh, Gory. Even the Tim Burton stuff. Like he did some pen and ink pen and ink work that was pretty cool. Shell Silverstein, if you know any of those references. Kind of a lot of it's um, kind of like book illustration. Oh dang. Again, like like these lines are pretty um I guess dull would be the right way to describe it in terms of line quality. Like, there's not a real sharpness to them. They look, you know, like the paper's tearing a little bit, and the nib isn't the sharpest nib, and the hand isn't the steadiest hand in the world. But ultimately, what you get when you see it done is just this just super dynamic, and, you know, it's all about the image, and, and he really, really knows how, like, to... I mean, he's got, like, really cool lighting on the, the violator that's fairly subtle beautiful wrapping of the anatomy here and even if it's fictional um it looks cool it's all that matters really ultimately and look at that hand i mean god freaking creepy ass hand it goes all the way across the double page spread it's huge 
He might have a little bit of Neil Adams in his stuff. I could see that, maybe. Spawn, standing there. He's like about to, about to wield some magic. And then it's, oh, hell breaks loose on Earth. Steve, paste and box on. That would be Steve Olith, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, look, Tom. Some such SFX. Sound effects. That... Oh, goes. Sorry, I'm reading it through the camera. Big and small and big and small. It's what's fun about these books is you get the little liner notes. Oh my god, this is going to be awesome. Issue 4 is dope. Look at that. Look at those eyes. This is what I'm talking about. Four. And this was back in the day where you'd get home and you'd buy like your three copies of each comic book because you were you were investing in your future. So you'd get one to read, one to never read, never even to remove from the backboard and bag, and then one that you could sell or keep. But sometimes the book was so good you'd have to go back to the store and buy more. People are like, what? But the people that know, know. If they know what I'm talking about, you get home and you'd be like, oh man, this is a big one. This is going to be the collector's item book. I need to grab more of these. This was it. I probably have ten of this. That's why the book sold like six million copies. It was idiots like me buying ten copies of a freaking book. You could probably still buy it for cover price. Maybe less. <laughs> it's okay though. You know what? It bought tacos for all the... <laughs> For all the creators. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> that is gnarly. I feel like I'm looking at um God, what was that guy's name? I draw the really like like crazy books. Oh man, I'll never remember it now. I never really collected his stuff, but he was like the big, like kind of gross gory guy back in the early nineties. He worked I think for more like independent publishers, or maybe he did his own book. It's not the dude that drew the crow, but like not, it's not James O'Barr, but kind of like he sort of ran in that crowd. Yeah, what was his name? I'll probably not remember it. it. was funny, my my comic book store. So I used to go to a place called Comic Castle, and it was interesting because it was two stories. So the bottom story was like new books, um, the counter that would have like trading cards. They had some spinner racks. Remember they had like kind of a cool sort of like stoner art section where like they put like the Dave McKeon and the Bill Sienkiewicz and um you know like the Giger book and stuff like that and that was kind of a cool thing but then they had the room with all the dirty books that weren't for like kids like the 18 and up comics it's kind of funny and then upstairs was like Dungeons and Dragons and like role playing stuff which was actually kind of cool because I, was, I st you know I still like to see that stuff and it's it scratches a creative itch but yeah it was a pretty good store. I actually went there and stood in line for Death of Superman. That's how pathetic I was. Got all caught up in the, <laughs> the hype. Superman's gonna die. I better buy a hundred of those. <laughs> it came in a black bag and then there was like a white bag, I think. I don't remember what the white bag was. It might have been a reprint. You had to get him though. You know who was great back then, and he still is great. Alex Ross. He gets a bum rap. Some people hate on him. And you can draw as good as Alex Ross with reference, and you can hate on the dude. Until then, I'd say zip it, because he's pretty good. <laughs> he's our Norman Rockwell. Come on, you know that. Dude is awesome. Let's lighten up. Todd is awesome. Look at this. All the McFarlane fans are like, who is this guy? This, this is a weird video. So I know these videos kind of bring in people that maybe don't normally follow my, ch my channel. They're like, this guy's, he's weird. But look, it's super fun sunny. Have some fun and let's look at art together. And chit chat. Man, that's great. He, he really draws cool hands. Yep, really, really good. Man, those arms on the violator are just crazy. Whoa, look at the one going in the back of the space. So that's nice. Again, overlapping things. Okay, do you see how the hand overlaps the tusks on the head? 
Um, the teeth overlap sort of like the lower jaw. He's got the leg behind the, um, the jaw there. The other leg is behind that. And then behind the body, he actually has um, another arm. So there's layers of detail here that really, really amplify the dynamic. And then even in front of that, he throws this like tin can that's open. It's like pretty random, but it all creates like a very, very cool sense of thing. And then it's taut like this, like this scroll thing. It's just cool. You see that and you're someone that aspires to draw. It's exciting to see something as simple as this that looks three dimensional. You know, it's like the way that he has it folded and wrapping around and stuff is real, real nice. Super, really very creative, very talented. Nice shot, back shot. Yeah, I'm glad we're looking at this. This is actually good stuff for me to see. Oh, he's a big Frank Miller fan too. I'm seeing it here, but but that I know that's another artist that, that Todd enjoyed. How can you not? The Dark Knight Returns is cool. Oh man, this is pretty brutal. That's got a little bit of Barry Windsor Smith feel to me. It's probably just uh, coincidental, but just like, yeah, the way that uh, it's kind of rendered and stuff. Man, that's nice. Well, there you go. That's why you work on anatomy and little bits and pieces. So if you ever have to draw an arm flying off a body, you got it. <laughs> All those pages and pages of arms that you practice will come in handy. Oh, this is Mel Boja, right? could be off on this. Maybe it's just the violator in some sort of like super expanded form, but go to hell. Oh wow, I didn't even see the violator there. Like I said, I'm looking through my phone. I can I can I can kind of gloss over stuff. That's crazy. That's really cool. Oh the violator is saying believe me spawn he already has. I get it. Oh yeah, the eye panels. I'm sure I've gone through some already, but where the eye and then the mouth and stuff is in the panel. You know what, though, it's funny is like some editors won't let you get away with that. That's why Todd Todd was a rebel and would do stuff. And I know that ultimately I think he left Marvel for like kind of a very, I, I think it was mounting, but, but he tells the story of having to do a correction on a piece and he was just like, you know what, I'm done with this. Oh man, that is so nice. We're running out of time, so my camera may turn off at 32 minutes. I don't know why that's like where it stops, but if so, thank you for tuning in. Smash the like. Check out Patreon for um, uh, that uh, pirate cover that he did, and, and uh, it's a tip jar for the channel. If you like what I'm doing on the channel and you've never... Um, you know, checked it out. Um, I do upload like little companion things. They're free. Um, I don't. I don't have l layers or levels of a sort of donation. It's just you know, tip what you want if you like what I'm doing. I put a lot of work into the channel, so it is. It is quite time consuming. Um, I have probably 375 videos up now, so it's a lot to look through if you've never checked out my channel. So please do. All right, we'll keep going. My my camera has 40 minutes of space, so we'll see if I can take this to 40 minutes. I'll do it for Mother's Day. Everyone needs to call their mom today if you haven't. That's nice. <laughs> His little arms. Oh yeah, I remember that page with the TVs. Hold on. God, you know, seeing this, it reminds me how much I like Todd's stuff, though. Not that I forgot, but but you know what I mean, like like this. God damn, 
Ah, oh, it's Savage Dragon. Sorry, I was, I, like I said, I'm looking through the phone. It gets a little dis distracted. That could be Jim Lee. Look, that's that's how tall he is now. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, but yeah, dude, Savage Dragon was awesome too. Oh man, God, memories. Kids don't know what you're missing out on today. The image boom was exciting. It was like the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, like they all appeared on the scene at one time, although they'd already been doing stuff, but it like it came to a head and you had a series. Except except Todd, I was gonna joke and say, Oh, that's Ray Miller. Um Yeah, all these books came out. And, you know, I can see some Frank Miller in this. Sin City, I think, was was actually coming out at this time, so I could see I could see Todd riffing off that a little bit. It's funny because right to the right of me is my big, gigantic Sin City Artist Edition style book. And it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. It's a very iconic cover. Those buildings, man. That'll take a while. All those little windows. Let's see. I'm curious to see if my camera's going to... Man, the hand is great. These are tough poses, too. Or I've always found them tricky as those crouchy poses. It's like to make it look natural. It can look like you're missing... Um, <laughs> <laughs> like torso or hips if you when you crunch down like yeah see this is what I'm talking about where, where Spawn could get wordy you'd have to dig in and really like you'd want to turn the page so bad but Todd would write a lot there'd be a lot to read that's nice oh this is the ice cream man story hopefully we can get through this I'll try to hustle a little bit that's nice god man Todd you rock and you know what Capullo he really came into just sort of some magic working on Spawn. His first couple issues were a little stiff, especially compared to Todd. Um, but uh, he kept kind of coming back on the book and doing fill-ins. He did that Angela, I think, miniseries. But yeah, Capullo cut his teeth on Spawn. And boy, I'll tell you what, when he came back in the like 50s or 60s, whenever it was, somewhere around there, might have been earlier, but... Dude, he crushed it. He was so good. His Sam and Twitch were just amazing. <clears throat> There's a couple issues in particular that I, I really, really love. Um, yeah, that's great. This is really good. I'm super happy that we picked this book today. Those thin panels, man, are dope. There's the thing. The numbers. All about the numbers. Oh yeah, see, look at oh, and and you know what? Look, see, that's a lot of text. Sometimes you just want like bam, pow. Todd would make you work for it. He had a lot. He had a lot to say. <laughs> oh, Cerebus! Holy shit! That's for you, James. Oh, and there's Felix the cat. Yellow yeah, Felix the cat. I like Cerebus too. Tatro's a good Cerebus. That's nice. They're both Canadian, eh? He's got love for his fellow Canuck. <laughs> oh, cool. So my phone, you know, weird when it updated. So it just will go. So we were good. We've got like seven more minutes. Oh, yeah, and there's the song. His little song he sings. The murderer, the murderer lullaby. This was a pretty shocking ending. If you've never seen this book before, this dude is sick. It's kind of like the movie Seven. He kills kids and like clearly glues their fingers to, I don't even know, some arts and crafts he's doing. Hopefully that's a wig and not actually the kid's sc <laughs> scalp. But uh, yeah, this guy's, he's got some problems, some issues. But Spawn's gonna take care of it. Look, it's the thing, just kidding. It's spawn. Whoa, look, he did a little photo stat here. Sorry, the pages are getting tricky to turn. Like, oh, me, I gotta switch hands or something. What is going on here? There we go. Ah, my phone cut out. All right, it's all right. We're back. And I gotta edit this stupid thing. Boo! We're right, we're right at the end zone. Yeah, these are fairly detailed pages, though. This stuff took some time. Todd was into this story for sure. He knew he was doing something important. Because this is, like, something that a lot of companies would be... Well, I don't know, maybe not now, but... 
he kind of went there like a child murderer and and like a lot of like kind of pretty dark material so and look you have to understand too so this is issue five of spawn by issue five of most of the image books these guys were lagging 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 i want to name names but mark silvestri did like two books in like three years it felt like spit it's another one I remember waiting forever for Cyber Force number two. I mean, it took forever in issue three. Then he kind of got moving a little bit. But, yeah, like Pitt. I turned a friend on to Pitt. He'd always ask me, where's issue three? It's like, guy's spending his money. He's got image money. He ain't drawing comics. He's buying bass guitars and shredding up in Canada somewhere. <laughs> but, yeah, Todd stuck to it and did books. He did the work. And he reaped the benefits for it. And Jim was fairly productive. Um, I don't know about Jim Valentino, and I know Eric Larson, you know, was a champ and did it. That's nice, man. But yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot, you know, it's easy in retrospect to have a collective book and just go, oh, well, like, here's 12 issues of this or seven issues. But yeah, Todd actually was producing this on a monthly schedule, which was quite impressive at the time. So the fact that this is a fairly detailed issue at issue five and he's writing it on top of it um, is, is quite a feat. So it's something that should be applauded. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Billy, that's a good one. Man, these pages are freaking hard to turn. Sorry. They're like in chunks, so it's like I can't turn one page. It wants to turn like four. There we go. Hello, Billy Kincaid. I'm Spawn. I'm about to kill you. It's like, uh oh. I scream, I scream. You're gonna scream. That's right. Spawn's gonna make you scream. It's gonna mess you up. I'm trying to think. Was Seven out at this time? No, I, I couldn't have been. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Goosebumps. Man, that was awesome. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Look, Overkill. I have the toy of this. Still in the box. Going to retire when I sell it for $7. And probably, you know what? I bet I couldn't get 7 bucks for it. I was a sucker. <laughs> Who has all their spawn toys still in the box? I do. No, I opened some. You know, my favorite spawn toy was the elephant hunter guy. Have you ever seen that toy? I used to have that on my desk at Wildstorm for a long time. This is a nice explosion panel. Um, okay, so we'll end on this. Yeah, so you know what? Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was fun. I hope the humor was humorful. And um, anyway, get to drawing. This is some cool stuff. This should this should grease the wheels and get you excited about drawing some some fun, dynamic, comics and it doesn't have to be fussy Todd puts it down just, just enough it looks good okay have a night have a nice day happy mother's day to everyone's moms and uh yeah I will be back tomorrow with a journey of a thousand miles okay bye try running <laughs>